As we all know, the Atari Jaguar is a powerhouse of a 64-bit system, capable of playing some truly amazing games like Alien vs. Predator, Tempest 2000, Doom, Iron Soldier, Missile Command 3D, and, um, Fight for Life. <laughs> So how could a lowly 16-bit system like the Super Nintendo hope to compete with Atari's mighty 64-bit Jungle Cat? Well, let's find out. First, let's talk about the console's design. Now, the Jaguar looks like a badass Batmobile to me, with the vents on the side and the cartridges that look like a Tory from a Japanese topiary garden. The connections on the back are a little cheap because they're just going directly into the motherboard, and there's no dust cover for the cartridge slot. That's not unusual for Atari consoles, though. As for the Super Nintendo, well, it looks like, um, boxes upon boxes uh, upon boxes. I mean, it's okay, but I don't know, it looks like a kid's toy to me. It's like a baby's toy. Alright, so what about the controllers? Well, the Jaguar controller looks a little awkward with that button pad and the three action buttons, but sometimes the numeric pad actually comes in handy. <coughs> Doom. The Super Nintendo controller feels better in the hand, and the pad is easier on the thumb, plus four face buttons and two shoulder buttons is pretty nice. Now the Jaguar Pro Controller on the other hand is a whole nother matter. Personally I think that one beats both of them. And as for the hardware, the Jaguar has five processors. Most videos are going to tell you that the 16-bit Motorola 68000 running at 13 megahertz is the main CPU, and that's fine, because really it's the graphics processor called Tom that is the heart of the Jaguar's power. So the Super Nintendo has a Ricoh 5A22 processor, which is basically a beefed-up 8-bit MOS 6502. From what I understand, this was chosen for backwards compatibility with NES cartridges that never happened. Again, Again, though, the real heart of the Super Nintendo's power is its picture processing unit, which can run at a maximum speed of 3.5 MHz. Okay, so on paper, the Jaguar's hardware wins handily, but it's what you do with that hardware that really matters. But before we get to the one-to-one -one comparisons, let's talk about some games that people always compare between these two systems. Oh, and there's some other odds and ends here, too. Anyway, let's get started with Mortal Kombat 2 versus Kasumi Ninja! When Mortal Kombat 2 was released, everyone was jumping on the brutal fighting game bandwagon. That game's digitized graphics, fast action, and special moves made everyone take notice. The Super Nintendo version of Mortal Kombat 2 is one of the best. Great graphics, sounds, and gameplay. Atari tried to one-up Mortal Kombat, and let's be honest here, that was never going to happen. My guess is they thought, we need a digitized fighter like Mortal Kombat 2. How can we make it stand out? Well, they tried making the character selection a 3D maze. I'm good. Also, you can't just choose any fighter you want when you start. I mean, why would you want to do that? Some strange decisions were made for this game, but, you know, at least it has some nice graphics and animation. <laughs> Kasumi Ninja is kind of strange. It's almost as though Atari tried to make it unlikable. A few tweaks and it might have been a decent game. It was never going to beat Mortal Kombat 2 though, that's for sure. Rayman Prototype vs. Rayman Did you know that Rayman was going to appear on the Super Nintendo? Yep, here's the prototype. It doesn't do very much, but it makes me wonder how a completed version would stack up against one of the Jaguar's best games. The Game Boy Advance version might give us an idea. The portable game is fun and colorful, but the resolution is far less than what the Super Nintendo could do. The Jaguar game is one of the best and actually fun titles for the system. Rayman travels through this magical world attaining powers and freeing his friends from cages. There's a variety in the stages, and the colors are off the chart. So would the Super Nintendo game have been fun? Yeah, sure. Would it have been more colorful or more fun than the Jaguar version? Eh, probably not. Star Fox vs. Cybermorph Okay, so Star Fox is an amazing 3D shooter game that would be impossible without the Super FX chip. There's no way that the Super Nintendo could do this with the base hardware. It's fast, and it has a lot of character to it, literally. There's a ton of interaction between the other pilots that makes it feel as though you're really part of the team. The downside is that the game is on rails, which means you can't just fly freely wherever you want, and I don't know, I guess that's a good thing? Because I'd probably get lost, kind of like I do with Cyberwarf. 
because as you can see, this game does allow you to fly anywhere that you want. It also does this 3D rendering without the need for a helper chip. The go road shading is pretty cool too, giving the graphics some depth. The gameplay, well, I mean, it's great if you like collecting pods. It's really missing that energetic fun factor of Star Fox. Only one more. So Cybermorph is a great example of where the Jaguar game is technically more impressive, but it just doesn't have the level of fun that the competition does. Super Mario Kart vs. Atari Karts. So Nintendo basically created the kart racing genre with Super Mario Kart. It is one of the best and most fun racing games ever created. It also uses an enhancement chip called the DSP-1 along with the Super Nintendo's famous Mode 7. The power-ups allow you to speed up or attack your opponents in different ways, and that really makes the game stand out. There's also some really great two-player options. Atari Karts, on the other hand, uses no enhancement chips and try to copy the Mario Kart formula. And in many ways, it's an improvement. It has more colorful and higher detail graphics with hilly terrain instead of being completely flat. It also features a two-player split-screen mode with several new characters to choose from. The power-ups are kind of lame though, and that really hurts the game in my opinion. Even at 1 8 the ROM size, Mario Kart is a more fun and playable game. Atari Karts is okay and has better color and sharper graphics though. It just needed a little more oomph in the fun factor department. Zool, Ninja of the Nth Dimension vs. Zool 2. The Super Nintendo got the original Zool game while the Jaguar got a sequel. Both games play basically the same though. Jump around and collect candy and make it to the end of the stage. Pretty simple stuff based off of an Amiga computer game. Zool 2 is essentially the same, but not exactly. Your character is still jumping around collecting candy, but this time you can choose a second character. Whoopity do! I've not been interested enough in this game to see all the bosses, but from what I have seen, they all have the same angry eyes look to them. Not a lot of variety there. This really should have been an easy win for the Jaguar, but the graphics are so bland looking and lack the parallax backgrounds of the Super Nintendo game. Alright, let's get to those pure one-to-one -one comparisons. Some of them are named differently, but they are the same game. First up is The Adventure of Kid Cleats vs. Soccer Kid. Here's a game about a kid who loves his soccer ball. He uses it to attack enemies all across Europe. I mean, honestly, he's really a menace. The Super Nintendo game looks good and has some great music. Gameplay is a little annoying though because your ball is the only way to defend yourself. If you kick it wrong or press the wrong button, you're screwed. The Jaguar game is known as Soccer Kid, which is typically what this game is called. It's a very good game with some great graphics and music, but I wonder why the sky is yellow in Stage 2 when it's blue in the Super Nintendo game. That makes this version seem not quite as colorful. Also, there's no snow in the Russia stage, and the bricks in the Japan stage are differently colored. Oh, and the Super Nintendo does a much better job at hiding the loading screen. Both games are very similar in terms of gameplay and stages. Graphics on the Jaguar are less grainy, but it's missing some of the polish and special effects of the Super Nintendo game. Brett Hall Hockey I feel like this is a forgotten hockey game overshadowed by the EA Sports NHL series. This first game looks to be using Mode 7 for the rink and animated sprites for the characters. I like how smooth the rink moves, very nice. The gameplay isn't the greatest, but it was mildly enjoyable. Al Michaels voiceover is a little bit much though. Over to 19, crosses the blue line, takes a hit from 21. With e by the, Vancouver goaltender. the Jaguar version was not completed, but it's pretty close. I'm playing it with Big PMU, so it's a little bit flickery. Sorry about that. Five with the puck in the neutral zone. 
Anyway, the rink this time is more of a 3D scaling affair. The motion looks a little jinky, but it's actually pretty smooth. The characters show off how the Jaguar can do scaling, and it has some mild zooming in and out. The sounds are a standout feature too. You can hear the skates shushing across the ice and the sticks hitting the puck actually sounds realistic. Al Michaels is still annoying, but not quite as much this time. So I feel like the gameplay is a bit better in the Jaguar game. It seems like it would have been more fun than the Super Nintendo game, but it is an unfinished game, so the Super Nintendo wins by default. A nice hit by six. Cannon fodder. A port of the Amiga and Atari ST computer game, this is one I didn't know appeared on the Super Nintendo. Use your pointer to tell troops where to go and who to shoot. You can blow up buildings too, which is pretty cool. Supposedly you can throw grenades and rockets, but I think I left them at home. I wasn't able to figure that out. The Jaguar version is, unsurprisingly, the same game, just with slightly higher resolution graphics, making the Super Nintendo game look grainy. The intro song is also much better with actual voice. And I never tire of hearing the enemy soldiers groan in agony. That just cracks me up. Both games are essentially the same and great fun. The Jaguar version is slightly better in the graphics and sound department though. Oh, and it also has a save game feature in addition to the passwords that both versions have. Charles Barkley, Shut Up and Jam. This is what happens when NBA Jam becomes popular. Accolade tries to copy it. This time with the NBA bad boy before Dennis Rodman, Sir Charles Barkley. Someone who'd never won a championship. Ooh, sorry about that. Anyway, this is your basic two-on-two b-ball game. The perspective is a little bit lower to the ground than NBA Jam, but I do appreciate the line scrolling on the court. That looks pretty cool. Music is repetitive and annoying. I don't really care for it. But the important thing is, the gameplay is just kind of boring. Then there's the Jaguar game. I don't think this game was actually finished. I know more complete versions exist, but I wasn't able to find a ROM dump of it. Which is great, actually. I'd much rather play a different game. Anyway, of the ROMs that I did find, one had sound but was glitchy with slow loading times. The other had no sound and was clearly a much earlier version. Oh well, I didn't really want to play this game anyways, especially after seeing that title screen. You can almost smell that armpit sweat, can't you? Ugh. I don't think this is a good game, but I'm giving it to the Super Nintendo simply because the game is complete and I'm annoyed that I can't find a good ROM for the Jaguar. Doom. The world's most popular first-person shooter, this one is pure adrenaline. A no-nonsense blastathon has you collecting powerful weapons, finding keys to open doors, and blasting enemies. And that's basically it. The Super Nintendo does an admirable job, but it needs a helper chip to achieve the 3DS graphics. It's missing the floor textures and feels a little slow, but overall it's playable. It even has music that is oddly missing from the Jaguar game. Fortunately, that's one of the few things that's missing from that version. The Jaguar has much smoother full-screen graphics. The monsters can be seen from different angles and will fight each other. One of the great features, though, is how the Jaguar controller allows the player to quickly select a weapon. Finally, all those buttons pay off! Lastly, there's a multiplayer option where you can hook up two Jags for some deathmatch fun. It's really no contest here. The Super Nintendo game can be fun, but the Jaguar version is miles better. It's widely regarded as one of the best console ports of Doom ever made. Double Dragon 5, The Shadow Falls. 
What happened to Double Dragon 4 anyway? Hmm. Oh, it looks like Battletoads and Double Dragon is standing in for that game. Anyway, for some odd reason, <coughs> Street Fighter, Technos decided to make the fifth installment a one-on-one -on -one fighting game based on the little-known cartoon show. So the Super Nintendo game is, well, awful. To its credit though, the background graphics are okay and the characters are interesting. The animation is a little choppy though. Also, the music is kind of cheesy and it could have been better. So how about the Jaguar version? Does it improve on the Super Nintendo game at all? Well, no, not a bit. The graphics are actually less detailed. What the heck? There's no parallax background. The line scrolling is barely noticeable and the color is bland. Oh, and look at how blurry the character graphics are. This is an embarrassing effort that feels like the programmers gave up halfway through the development, which is probably true. Double Dragon 5 is not a good game, but it's far less enjoyable than the Jaguar. The Super Nintendo has better graphics, sounds, and gameplay. It's laughably cheesy, but, you know, in a good way. Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. So this is a game based on the movie based on the legendary martial artist Bruce Lee. Any game featuring chop sake fighting has to be good, right? Well, no, it's not. It's awful. It's like Virgin Interactive took a lesson from Atari's Fight for Life and made the hits barely do any damage. I should be able to whip up on this first guy in about 30 seconds, but I just can't do it. Hey, at least the Super Nintendo has some really good stereo sound and music going for it. Now the Jaguar game looks more detailed, but it's blurry somehow? Also, there's no animation in the backgrounds. Not even a fan spinning in the gym. Come on, man. The Jaguar is plenty powerful to do this. I think the programmers just, they didn't care. And I can't say I blame them. Neither of these games are fun. The matches just take far too long to complete. The Super Nintendo has more interesting background graphics, better color on most stages, and stronger sound effects, making the hits feel more substantial. Flashback, the quest for identity. Has anyone ever beaten this game? I don't know, I'm just wondering because it's been ported to at least 19 different systems. Personally, the difficult controls are a total turnoff for me, so I never get very far into it. The slow rotoscoped animation also makes it hard to like, but I do enjoy the cartoony graphics, especially in the cutscenes. Now, I really can't see much of a difference between the Super Nintendo and Jaguar versions. Just a slight resolution bump of maybe 20 pixels and a bit more detail on the characters. But the question is, which one runs at a faster frame rate? Let's do a very unscientific comparison. Alright, so here's both games. The Super Nintendo is on the top and the Jaguar is on the bottom. They seem pretty comparable, but now let's step through the frames. Uh, neither of them seem to be animated at every frame. Also, I did notice that the Super Nintendo has some stage interactivity not on the Jaguar version. Interesting. Overall, though, both of these games are good, and there's no significant difference that I can tell. Head on Soccer vs. Fever Pitch Soccer this is a pretty decent soccer game played in an isometric 3D view. This is more of an arcade style game and pretty light on simulation, something that I really appreciate. The Super Nintendo game looks, plays, and sounds great. I also understand that it allows for four players with a special multi-tap. The Jaguar version is also good. First off, I noticed that the crowd noise is a little bit more muted here. And once again, the resolution is a little bit better on the Jag. The only real downside of this being on the system is that there's really nothing here that screams 64-bit. Now, I've never been much of a soccer fan, but if I had to choose a game, I'd probably go with this one. Really, for the Jaguar or the Super Nintendo, because they're both equally fun. 
The Humans vs. Evolution Dino Dudes. An action puzzle game where you must guide a tribe of humans. That must be why it's called Humans. Hmm. Jump over chasms, avoid dinosaurs, discover fire, ride a wheel, you know, that kind of stuff. Basically, you just need to get to the end of the stage. Now, I never knew that there was a Super Nintendo version of the game. Only in Europe, I think. What surprised me, though, is that this is an Atari-owned property, probably from when it appeared on the Lynx. I bet the current Atari doesn't even know that they own it. Anyway, this version of the game has a serious flaw. If you mess up, you're screwed. You can't pause and then restart the stage. So aggravating. The Jaguar version was also created by Magitech Design, but it's called Evolution Dino Dudes. Not sure why they changed the name here. This version has more colorful and detailed graphics, better sounds, and I think better controls. It's simpler to select your human with the keypad than with the Super Nintendo's shoulder buttons. Both versions can be mildly entertaining for a few moments, but you would surely enjoy the Jaguar version more because of the more colorful backgrounds, controls, and the fact that you can restart a stage if you want. NBA Jam Tournament Edition Probably the most fun and accessible basketball game ever made. Anyone can jump in and start making incredible slam dunks. Even my grandmother. From the outside! The Super Nintendo game retains much of what made the arcade game great. The abundant roster, the colorful graphics, the amazing sound effects, and the fast-paced gameplay. For two! There's some missing voice and no music during the gameplay, though. And that's a bit of a head-scratcher since the Super Nintendo usually has no problem with music. From downtown! Score! The Jaguar version is a much closer match to the arcade game. It has all the same rosters and modes, even more colorful graphics with larger character sprites, more voice, more sound effects, and in-game music. Something that's regularly missing from Jaguar games, but not so with this one. Side by side, the Jaguar version of NBA Jam is the obvious winner. It's one of the best home ports of the game and proves that Jaguar games can be great if handled by the right people. Is it the shoes? Out of this world versus another world. This is basically the prequel to Flashback. It has the same similar gameplay and rotoscope characters, but I actually kind of like this one a tad bit better. It feels like several cutscenes pieced together, much like Dragon's Lair. You just have to know what to do, and as far as I can tell, there's not too many random events to mess you up. So, for the Jaguar, this one was never released. But a fan port called Another World was, and it's impossible to find a ROM for this game. From this low quality footage that I found, it seems that the Jaguar has much higher detailed backgrounds though. So I can't really call it for either of these versions. I can play the Super Nintendo game, but I can only look at the Jaguar game. So I don't know, you tell me, which one do you think is better? Pinball Fantasies This is a pinball game that originated on the Amiga computer and is the sequel to a game called Pinball Dreams. You get four tables, Party Land, Speed Devils, Billion Dollar Game Show, and Stones and Bones. That one's my favorite. Surprisingly, the Super Nintendo game doesn't use the system's color palette to its full potential as much of the graphics are dithered. What is this, the Sega Genesis? It's a pretty fun game, but I wish there was more 3D depth to the tables. They just seem kind of flat. The Jaguar version is a significant improvement in color and sound. The graphics absolutely pop in this game, making it a joy to behold. Sounds and music are of a higher quality and seem richer. Did I do any testing to prove that? Mm, nope, just going by what my ancient ears tell me. The gameplay is essentially the same between the two games, but it's clear that the Jaguar version is heads and shoulders above the Super Nintendo game in terms of graphics and sounds. That to me makes it more fun to play. 
Pitfall the Mayan Adventure. A confusing sequel to the original Atari games. All you do is wander around the jungle and search for your dad. Honestly though, now that I've played this game about a dozen times on different systems, I kind of know where to go. The Super Nintendo game plays fast and smooth even though it's only running at 240 by 224 resolution. That causes the screen to look a little stretched and reduces your field of view. Kind of typical of Super Nintendo games. As you would expect, the gameplay on the Jaguar version is much the same, but with better color and 320x240 resolution, I think. The background on the first stage is a more appropriate green than the Super Nintendo's purple. Well, either way, you're still wandering around getting lost, just like in the Super Nintendo version. I guess that's really bringing the feel of the jungle home, isn't it? Also, having a save feature is pretty nice. Who wants to type in that password every time? Now I've heard the Jaguar game only runs at 30 frames per second, but honestly I've never noticed. I guess that's what you get when a port is rushed. The game plays essentially the same on both systems, and that's really what matters. Power Drive vs Power Drive Rally A top-down racing game that was only released in the United Kingdom and apparently is quite rare. First off, the graphics are kind of drab, and I find the music to be too loud by default. I guess maybe I should have just turned it off. But that's not even the real problem of the game. Nope. The most frustrating thing is the steering. If you see my car twisting around, it's because the game tries to auto-steer for me along the straights, and I'm compensating for that. I eventually got used to it, but it still sucks. The Jaguar game is far more pleasant to play. It's got more colorful graphics and sky reflection in the water. That's pretty cool. The music is excellent and fits the game nicely. The voice of your co-pilot is a bit annoying, but I usually just ignore him. The best part about the game, though, is the very accurate controls. The developers obviously figured out what they did wrong with this Super Nintendo game. No contest here, Power Drive Rally is one of the better games for the Jaguar and splashes mud all over the Super Nintendo game. Primal Rage This is one of my favorite fighting games outside of Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. Probably because it was by Atari Games. Anyway, it's dino on dino action as you battle it out for New Earth. That's U-R-T-H. The Super Nintendo game has many of the gameplay elements of the arcade. Except there's one thing missing, animated backgrounds. What gives here? Some of them are really lame and pathetic looking. The Jaguar version has the benefit of being on the CD, so it's much closer to the arcade. The backgrounds look excellent with lots of parallax and stuff going on. There's also more blood in this version and you can see it pool around your enemy when you knock them down. Oh, and more animation in the character models, making the game feel more accurate to the original. The only downside is the loading times from the CD. You have to be patient to play this one, unfortunately. Yep, the Jaguar's more powerful hardware shines here. It's one of the best home ports of Primal Rage, if you like Primal Rage. The only thing is, though, if you want a quick go of the game without waiting for it to load, well, play the Genesis game because the Super Nintendo game sucks. Raiden Trad vs. Raiden. Did you know that Trad meant traditional? I never knew that. Anyway, this is a top-down shooter that seems to show up on a lot of 16-bit consoles of the time. It's a decently fun game with two different weapon types, blue and red. Keep collecting the same color to max out your firepower. The Super Nintendo's background graphics are very lifeless and the colors they chose look dull. Oh, and the music is quite snooze-inducing. Well, at least the gameplay is fun. I especially like it when your ship is maxed out and it's a blast spraying the skies with ammo. Yeah! The Jaguar version is just called Raiden, but they appear to be basically the same game. 
The first thing you'll notice is how the programmers try to recreate Tate, or Tate mode if you prefer, by including this large and annoying status info on the right side. But I got used to it pretty quick and began to appreciate the better color, sounds, and surprisingly way better music on the Jaguar. The sound effects here really make the hits feel substantial, and that Mega Bomb is awesome! Despite the control panel on the side, the Jaguar game is superior in graphics, sounds, and music. Fortunately, the gameplay is essentially the same for both, though. Sensible Soccer. This is that soccer game with the tiny players. There's practically every team and option you can think of. Play on grass, dirt, mud, or ice? What? The Super Nintendo version plays good, but I can't help but notice the constant and annoying crowd noise in the background. Occasionally they cheer, but not often enough. Maybe it's just because I suck at this game. The Jaguar game has much improved crowd noise effects. Sometimes they sing, and other times they groan, just like you listening to this commentary. I don't know if the crowd noise makes the gameplay any better though. Also there's no music which I feel helps build the drama of the game. These two versions are basically the same in gameplay and graphics, but the sounds are far superior in the Jaguar game. Syndicate. In this futuristic shooting game, you control several agents in an isometric top-down view who have been tasked with different missions. What are those missions? I don't know. I've never liked this game to get very far into it. But I gotta say though, I was kind of enjoying the Super Nintendo game. It seems like the controls take better advantage of the Super Nintendo's controller. As for the Jaguar game, I absolutely hate it. The controls confuse the heck out of me. It's definitely not a pick up and play game like Cannon Fodder. I mean, I can't even figure out the most simplest thing to do, like how to shoot. Maybe I gotta select and equip my weapons or something at the start of the game, I don't know. Either way, I think the Jaguar game is more accurate to the computer game, and really that's not a good thing. The Super Nintendo version, despite its complexity, is a more fun pick up and play style experience. Theme Park! Now this is more of my speed. I love theme parks and god simulators like this. Here you have to build the world's greatest amusement park by placing rides, shops, pathways, and, um, janitors. You control the prices and the amount of sugar in the food. Later on you get more and better rides to add and you can even create your own custom roller coasters. One thing I don't care for are the controls. They just don't make sense to me at all. Getting to the coaster was always my goal on the Jaguar version. It takes quite some time to get there, but it's a fun ride. The game benefits from the Jaguar's number pad controller. It's easier to select different shops and rides by using it. The colors aren't quite as bright as the Super Nintendo game, but they are slightly more realistic. Oh, and the Jaguar has a faster processor, something that really comes in handy when the game starts to chug. I love the Jaguar version of this game. Yeah, it's a basic 16-bit port, but it keeps me entertained every time I play it. The controls are a big part of that because they're much more intuitive on the Jag. Total Carnage! The sequel to Smash TV, which is a semi-sequel to Robotron 2084. This is a top-down shooter in the vein of Commando or Ikari Warriors, but with twin-stick shooter controls. There's lots of different weapons that pop up, but sadly they don't last very long. You can also get lots of points by rescuing the scantily clad prisoners. The Super Nintendo game does a good job of replicating the arcade game, but it feels, I don't know, a little off, slower somehow. I guess that kind of makes sense. 
The Super Nintendo's controller button layout is perfect for this kind of game, though. The Jaguar game was a surprise when it showed up. I didn't even know it was in development. The graphics are darker than the Super Nintendo game and look very tile-based, as evidenced by these parachutes. Also, I'm not hearing any music. Hello? Fortunately, this game does play fast and smooth and is a fairly good representation of the arcade game. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But the controls just don't match the Super Nintendo. Having to hold down the button to lock your aim is much less intuitive. Both games are decent, but which one is better? Do I go with the faster gameplay and better graphics, or better controls and music? Um, can I just play the original arcade game instead? Tommy Moe's Winter Extreme Skiing and Snowboarding versus Val de Sayre Skiing and Snowboarding. These type of games just don't get enough love, do they? But here's a pretty good one that I didn't know existed for the Super Nintendo. It's got some really cool effects, making it look like you're going up and down the hills. Is this mode 7? Um, I'm not really sure. Regardless, I do have one question. What's with that yellow glare at the top of the screen? Is that supposed to replicate the sun or something? I find the controls pretty tight, but you can oversteer if you're not careful. This is a fun one, so give it a chance. The Jaguars game is rather acclaimed. It's very fast, and you can tell the system has no problem replicating the same hills as the Super Nintendo game. I like the background here better as it looks super realistic. I guess it should since it's a photograph. Controls are also tight in this version, but I find it odd that in both games you have to press the B button to move. Kind of like a gas pedal. Weird. Both games are quite fun, and I really love that the Super Nintendo can fake that hilly terrain. It's visually stunning. Overall though, I feel that the Jaguars version is a more competent game in both graphics and sounds. Yeah! Checkpoint! Troy Aikman NFL Football. An American football game that's not John Madden? Huh? Well anyway, you'll be surprised to learn that I kind of like this game. It's got all the NFL teams, multiple plays to choose from, and fast arcade style gameplay. Yeah, that's probably why I like it. Touchdown! Sure, the animation is a little choppy, but, you know, I got used to it. How does it compare on the Jaguar? Well, this one's constant crowd noise is missing, so it feels like I'm playing in an empty stadium. The players are larger and nicely animated though. Well, at least better than the Super Nintendo version. Knocked away. The field has this weird warping towards the top of the screen though. Kinda odd. Bumble. Out of bounds. Still, I had fun with this game, which surprised the heck out of me. Touchdown! So sounds are better on the Super Nintendo, but the gameplay and graphics are much better on the Jaguar. Jeez, if only these games would combine the best features of both, we might have something. <laughs> Wolfenstein 3D The predecessor to Doom, where you roam a 3D maze shooting... Um, American-sounding Germans? What happened to the National Socialists? Why don't the paintings of the father have his trademark postage stamp mustache? Oh, I get it. Nintendo's censorship got a hold of this game. Well, at least it plays basically the same as the original, but with a far lower resolution. In this case, it can actually be a detriment when playing, because it makes it hard to see the enemies off in the distance. Good music and sounds, though. Stop! Hold! Okay, so the Jaguar version is not censored in any way. We hear the famous Achtung by the enemy soldiers. There are enemy appropriate logos everywhere. The dear leader paintings have his mustache. There are German shepherds to be dealt with. And enemies explode with blood when you shoot them. 
the screen resolution is far greater, making it easier to aim and see your enemies. Also, the rotation of the maze is just so buttery smooth. It's a shame that Nintendo felt the need to censor their version of the game, but even if it wasn't, the Jaguar game is far better thanks to its higher resolution graphics and smooth gameplay. Worms. A turn-based strategy action game where you maneuver your troops, um, I mean worms, into position and then fire at the enemy worms. The graphics are very nice here in the Super Nintendo game and replicate the original computer game well. There's lots of different weapons and items that lead to different strategies, which I have no idea what they are. The Jaguar game almost didn't happen. Atari pulled the plug on the system when Worms was almost finished, but thankfully it was released by Telegames sometime later. I like the music and sound effects here. This game looks simple, but I think there's a lot of complexity to it, and I'll be honest, it doesn't really do it for me. So between the two, I'm giving this one to the Jaguar version. Both play essentially the same, but the Jaguar has higher resolution graphics and better sound. And a game like this that rose from the dead, I think that's pretty cool. Zoop. Why does this game exist? It's an awful puzzle game where you shoot at odd looking shapes. You take on the color of the shape behind the ones that you just vanquished, which makes the game kind of confusing. It does have some nice music though, if nothing else. So the Jaguar game is practically identical. Same boring graphics, same mediocre music. Obviously this was just a quickie port, and honestly it makes the Jaguar look pretty weak. This game is as unremarkable as it gets, but for some reason it just keeps popping up. Some may like it, but I find it extremely boring and annoying. Stay away from both of these versions. Alright, well there you go. At least... 1, 2, 3... 26 Super Nintendo games compared to its Jaguar counterparts. Overall, I think the Jaguar holds up pretty well in comparison. After all, it's not superior hardware that matters, it's the games themselves. And back then, it was the original games on the Super Nintendo, not the ports, that blew everyone out of the water. Anyway, let me know which games you prefer down in the comments. Until then, I want to thank you for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye everyone.